Okay. How to score high in anthropology? Recently, this optional became very popular. Students are getting some of them very high scores. So, how should we go about scoring high in anthropology? First, be clear about the syllabus. Be thorough with the syllabus. And uh, you understand it consists of Socio-cultural is the main thing. Next, physical. Next, big chunk. And archaeological. Okay. From exam point of view, I would divide them into only three main areas. And next important thing is combine paper one and paper two. Knowledge of paper one to be used in paper two. And paper two which specializes in India can be used as an example in paper one. So, don't divide into paper 1 and paper 2 artificially. So, mix. It helps. And so, socio-cultural can be divided into paper 1 and paper 2. Archaeological also, paper 1 and paper 2. Combine. Physical paper 1. Okay. And uh, now, if anthropology is doing well, it is because of two important factors. The kind of questions they are asking. First factor is that they are close to syllabus. Often wording of the question is wording of the syllabus. This is important. And second thing is they repeat it. Many questions are repeated. So most of the paper consists of questions close to syllabus and repeated. Remember, in any optional, there will be some of the track questions and ignore them. Don't think you should answer any question. Not like that. Target 95% plus questions. And that in anthropology, they are close to syllabus and repeated to UK. So, have the syllabus and then it is about identifying the questions that can come in each area. Identify distinct number of questions in each area. Distinct number of questions. Okay. In socio cultural, 
you can divide it in terms of family caste religion economic and political organization tribes thinkers and methods socio cultural across papers can be divided into like this why area wise division is helpful is that it is easier to interlink if you prepare that way so under each unit you identify distinct number of questions distinct means uh, separate requiring separate preparation same thing caste religion economic tribes tribes constitute a lot thinkers methods of field work various other things so you will get a fixed number of questions and your preparation is about preparing good answers to these nearly well defined and fixed number of questions so next step is about knowing what makes a good answer okay so this approach helps in many optionals but in anthropology it is more so because in some optionals something will be mentioned in the syllabus but what question can come is difficult to predict there is so much of possibility and within that possibility anything can come some optional some areas are like that but anthropology is not like that there is a wording of the syllabus and and there is a question corresponding to this and then this is repeated so it is amenable to listing a fixed number of questions and preparing good answers so the next step is what makes a good answer so let me summarize club paper 1 and paper 2 classify go through the previous questions and identify in each area some distinct questions and then prepare good answers what makes a good answer an anthropology textbook by ember and ember i think provides a framework for a good answer framework suppose it is saying something on preferential marriages okay what makes a good answer how does it what does it say you write about context of marriage context of marriage and why preferential why and when types diagrams examples and theoretical view points 
happened now what is the present situation contemporary and when you are explaining why give evidence who or what source i think these constitute a good answer let me revise preferential marriage may have been mentioned only at one place in a book in a sort in a notes but if the question is on this you take this as the core but build your answer around it context taken somewhere else why when types why why there is a marriage why there is a preferential it is about evidence and who gave what is the source and then examples any corresponding theories levi strauss said certain things about matter pattern and then contemporary relevance so uh, this makes a good answer so prepare good answers like this for those identified questions but there are certain common things to these good answers answer 1 answer 2 answer 3 answer 4 if you want to develop answers like this there are certain common elements for example if you are good at theory and methods thought can be used in different answers so there are some areas which can be applied across many good answers thought is one such that's one next i said examples for examples you read certain profiles ethnographic profiles certain ethnographic profiles can be used across answers okay and then contemporary evidence and other things and do some case studies and if the case studies are rich rich in analysis here i would like to say uh, rich case studies mean that very analytical factual with a lot of explanation epw and one more source is jstor jstor you can read government reports kaka and others but the difference between government reports and kaka and this is that these government reports just give the facts so you can memorize and place them at at one place but they don't generate analysis that can be used across the papers okay so my point is that know what is a good answer and then good answers require 
certain common sources, common sources, and spend more time on these common case studies or thinkers or ethnographic profiles and use them across the answers. Okay. This I think will make a good preparation. But there are certain things you need to know about the nature of the exam and how some people are getting very we will very discuss what makes a good answer from UPSC point of view. Good answer from UPSC point of view is not the same thing as good answer from Ember and Ember point of view. Okay. And I closely followed strategy of these people, Koya Harsha. AR 6th Ashima Metal AR 12 from 2017 exam Akshan Jain AR 2 Naveen AR 75 from 2018 exam They got high scores and I closely followed their strategy and they were very, very frank, passionate, very clear and transparent. So from them, we know what is UPSC looking for, not what is expected by a professor. Going by their strategy, two things seem to be very, very important. I would say those two things, I am dividing the board. Facts. Diagrams. Facts and diagrams seem to be the key to 350. Facts and diagrams. So, what is a good answer from UPSC point of view is a lot different from what is a good answer from a good anthropology textbook. What do I mean by this? A good answer from a textbook on preferential marriages okay, is primarily to answer logically, primarily to answer logically, answer it logically and this logic is supported by Facts, variable, and write as you understand. So take the question seriously, see how you understand, and answer it logically. Since you are not discovering it for the first time. You depended on certain literature. You support it by facts, whatever you have. This, I think, should be called a good answer. It means your understanding, logic, supported by facts. Facts can be case studies, examples, theories, or whatever. But UPSC toppers 
are not doing exactly like this. What they are doing is, if there are questions Q1, Q2, Q3, they are not trying to see how they understand. It is more about to which question they have more facts. Very unusual. It is not about whether they understand theoretically they have something to say. It is more about where do they have more facts. So question is, answer is primarily about generating more dimensions, more dimensions. This makes a good answer. More points, more dimensions I think makes a good answer. But under dimension also more points, here a good answer means an important point. But UPSC is not about important point. It is about more points, sometimes silly points. This is UPSC. And it is not your opinion, but others' opinions. So, they are bombarding with facts, facts and facts and facts, quotations, books, which year books are written, who said what, from which magazine, which report. It is not their understanding. It is about others. It is about more. Please don't think they are not understanding. They have reasonable understanding. And definitely the people who are scoring high are smart people. They are intelligent. So they understand. But the primary strength is not understanding. Understanding at, one, at reasonable level understanding at a level where they can interlink, integrate, draw from various sources and make a relevant answer. They may not have understood anything at an abstract and a higher level, but their understanding is good enough to be able to write a good introduction, good conclusion, interlink areas and bombard with facts. So in the selection of the question itself, they think, how many facts I have? And if I don't have facts, don't adapt. Physical anthropology questions may score well more. Archaeology may score more. Examples, profiles, case studies. Okay, so facts, facts, facts. This is the strategy. Next, diagrams, diagrams, for everything instead of seeing text, they are going for diagrams, things that can be said easily as a text also they are going for diagrams, which they are calling innovation. Diagram first of all is striking to the examiner. Examiner can't miss and takes answer takes fewer words and conveys more and diagram is very personal. It is your own way of looking at it. 
and sometimes it can be a simpler and clearer way of saying the same thing. So, they are bombarding with facts and those facts are conveyed most of mostly through diagrams. So, fewer words, more diagrams. Okay. And uh, variety of diagrams, unusual diagrams. So, uh, UPSC answers are different. They are packed with facts and diagrams. And what does it mean to your preparation? Because they have to write so many facts, what they are doing is, they are identifying fixed set of questions. Okay. But then, and then, preparing answers. Elaborate answers with facts and diagrams. And memorize. Revise. Multiple revisions. So memory plays a very, very important role. Multiple revisions. So the fact that they have only three hour time is making them to prepare very, very thoroughly at home. Memorize many facts prepare diagrams and because the questions are repetitive and expected just unleash your preparation in the exam unleashing your preparation they are even saying don't think but I don't think the exam should be like this but that is what it is so if you want to do well this is the way. thank you